Hi, this is Shadi and today I have a very sour footage to share with you. So it is about two soldiers engaging in a fight and they are both clearly trained in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Uh, and the reason why I call this uh, video BJJ fight and not judo fight, it's because of the approach that they took. The one that is, you know, much more about grappling and taking time and very much reflective of sport BJJ today. Um, as opposed to today's judo which is grip throw and disengage so you guys know my stance on the technical heritage and where these techniques and positions came from but i called it bjj because you know to separate with the expressions of today's sports jiu-jitsu and judo so without further ado let's begin so here uh, the guy goes for a single leg takedown and tries to run the pipe. The guy grabs a guillotine, flares his elbows and wrists. These guys are clearly trained in BJJ. This is your classical BJJ match starting up. Guy who goes for a single leg and then tries to counter with a guillotine or Kimura in a lot of uh, times. So single leg, you would know that this is the bread and butter of takedowns in Jiu Jitsu, particularly no gi. Uh, it is very famous, you run the pipe, and then you proceed to pass guard or you can uh, do like a cartwheel flip many ways to pass the guard this is andre galvao one of the greatest champions of the sport uh, even back in the day classical judo had its own uh, single leg takedown variation moro tegari you hug the leg you reap it towards you and then you dive with your shoulders down slamming them and taking their balance away from them continue rolling to pass the guard so Hadakajime or guillotine, what we call it today, is also a very classical choke uh, in judo slash Japanese jujitsu. This is from the 1905 jujitsu textbook by Sadakazu Oye Nishi. So, uh, standing up here, you can do it also from the guard. Um, various ways to do the guillotine, but nonetheless, the technique on the head, on the neck, it is still very much the same. Obviously, it has evolved, but the basics are still there. So, he reaches in and actually grabs the groin of the guy and you can see his face immediately change and in the, in the actual video you can see how he is actually begging and just immediately gives up even though he had a great position so the guy gets on top establishes neon belly grabs the wrists and then they continue to you know verbally yell at each other and you can clearly see the neon belly is almost at the solar plexus to establish dominance control neon belly is also nothing new here you can see from the book uh, new style of judo by kanemitsu yaichibe you can see it on the right side it is being established in judo back in the day the kosen judo it was a intermediary position to get to a strangle if you are fighting it can also be used as a pin to control uh, so first let's see mitsuro kimura use it in order to get to a triangle choke so here he passes the guard, he puts the knee on the belly and then isolates the arm and then from there jumps into the triangle choke. So here you can see it, Mitsuro Kimura was actually called Mr. Sankaku because he was very much known for it. Here, one more time in slow motion, you can actually lock the arm as well. He passes guard, Toreando pass, then puts the knee on establishing control so they don't turn or try to turtle or anything isolates the arm and then from there goes into sankaku jime and then locks it through takes the head in in order to close it so uh, here you can see the guy turns and then your classical attack which is hadaka jime very basic yet it always works the guys here are telling them hey guys stop etc so when he turns similar to ground and pound or any type of you know mount uh let's say desperate defense where you actually turn and turtle a lot of guys take the the rear naked choke or they just can proceed to ground and pound if it's in the cage so they can actually win the fight so this hadaka jime here you see in the judo demonstration by the kodokan is actually much different than the one we saw uh, the soldiers do because this one you can see the forearm is actually parallel to the neck this is a trachea choke rather than a strangle where you have your elbow in the middle and you create a v to block the carotid artery so 
the other one was a strangle, the other one is a choke. So um, the reason why I'm making this video is this is why I prefer judo for self-defense. A lot of people ask me, there is judo MBJJ in my school, what should I do first? My interest is self-defense. I always say judo and yes, I'm very biased. People call me judo fanboy, etc. But I like to think there's a logical approach to this because in a real fight, in, the more contact there is and the longer the fight it's taking, the worst off you are going to be. So this is why I prefer the judo expression of grip you know, throw, disengage. As much as we like to give crap to judo about the rules, um, they did establish something really good, which is, you know, hurry up, the do or die uh, mentality. Grip, there's no stalling. You just have to keep the game going. You grip, you try to throw, and if you don't get the throw, you're actually, you know, it's you're doing something spectator friendly, but it's actually about being in a hurry, do it now, do or die mentality. That's actually very good in a street fight. I recently did a video about the um, judokas who died on duty and uh, in the dojo. And I've talked about this one police officer who went after an arsonist and he says, you know, he fought with all his might. That's what the records show. And then he eventually got stabbed in the chest. So the more uh, contact there is and the longer the fight takes which is very normal in BJJ because as Joe Rogan cooks it you're cooking your opponent the worst off you're gonna be and also another reason why I prefer uh, judo as opposed to BJJ is in a street fight you want to be confident standing on your own two feet this is something very um, I'd say very evident so you know, you might not have the best Newaza because of the rules of today, the groundwork that the, the older legends had, which is fine. But, you know, uh, street self-defense wise, it is much better. I would also uh, advocate strongly to bring back leg grabs for to defend against them and also to know how to do them, which is also very crucial because we pride ourselves of being kings of the throws and yet we're not allowed to grab the legs. And to me, this is not something good. So I wanted to make this video because I wanted to show you that the longer the contact, even though you think you have, you know, the better position, a lot can go wrong. You can be the best clincher, the best, uh, you have the best uh, over underhook and someone can easily take a chunk uh, out of your ear or your neck. Um, you might have an osycomia and hold it for too long and then someone can, you know, take out something from their pocket and then just proceed to stab you. So. That's why a lot of the arrest pins are usually belly down with the arms behind the back. So uh, if you have anything else to add, please let me know down below. Also consider supporting me on Patreon. I have exclusive content for the patrons only, like behind the scenes, full podcasts, etc. But don't worry, my uh, main content will always be here on YouTube. So please don't feel obliged, but the support would mean greatly. This was Shady and thank you for listening.